Good morning, everyone. My name is Dale Begley, and I'm a senior scientific curator in the Mouse Models of Human Cancer Database at the Jackson Laboratory. MMHCDB is part of Mouse Genome for Informatics at the Jackson Laboratory. Mouse Genome Informatics is a collection of databases hosted by the Jackson Laboratory. These databases have a common computational core and use coordinated definitions such as official gene allele nomenclature, consolidated pick list of terms, and a central bibliography. This enables consistent searches across different databases. So if you search for data using the same term, you get the res your results about the same structures, alleles, mice, strains, etc. These databases contain different information types about the laboratory mouse. This is the MGI homepage. The MGI homepage can be accessed from the Jackson Laboratory public page or directly by going to the URL on the lower left, www.informatics.jax.org. MGI consists of the Mouse Genome Database, the Gene Expression Database, GXD, the Mouse Models Human Cancer Database, MMACDB, and the Gene Ontology Database, and is part of the Alliance of Genome Resources. The major data sections are represented by these tabs you see in the center and pointed out by my laser pointer. You can search for information on genes, on different phenotypes of mutant alleles in mice. You can search for information on whether a, a gene has a connection to a mouse disease or human disease, or a human disease has a connection to a mouse gene. You can search for, use the, search the gene. These three tabs are all in the mouse genome database, MGD. The gene expression database covers, inform, contains information on expression of genes in the developing mouse embryo. The gene expression database has large numbers of, Im, of uh, images, mostly assay images, RNA and C shoes, uh, westerns, uh, northerns, etc. There's information on the recombinase Cree database, which is part of the Jackson Laboratory's mouse uh, division. This contains information on Different Cree uh, strains, they'd be, they'd be transgenic, knock ins, recombinants, et cetera, and the expression patterns of the Cree in those particular strains. We have a function database, which is the gateway into the gene ontology information, which gives you information on classifications of different genes in terms of their structure and function. We have, and from, uh, we have a uh, search form for strains, SNPs, and polymorphisms. Also for vertebrate homology, but between different strains, between different species in the mouse. The mouse models of human cancer database contains information on tumors in the endogenous tumors in the laboratory mouse, and also has information on patient-derived xenograft uh, structures. I will be spending most of the time on the mouse models of human cancer database, as that is my database. If you want to have specialty requirements, you can do batch data analysis tools that you can have large downloads or specialty searches. We also have a section that covers nomenclature of the laboratory mouse. This is very important as if you don't have the right name and the right gene, there's no way you can actually know what information you're getting back. The mouse model zoom and cancer database, which is what I work in, is MAR is geared toward tumor information. We have been collecting phenotype information and pathology information for many, many years. And you can see you click to, you gain access to the mouse model zoom cancer database by either clicking on the tab at the MGI homepage or going directly to the URL, tumor.informatics.jax.org. That'll take you to the Mouse Models of Human Cancer Database homepage. The homepage has drop down menus, which I'll show you later, which allows you access to the different types of search tools. It also shows, gives you a general statement of what we, the Mouse of Models of Human Cancer Database does. Also shows a, a table that gives 
a list of the top models. Well, these are the top cancers in human in human species, humans. The mortality rank, the estimated deaths per year, and particularly in the last year that we looked at, and are there mouse models of that particular type of cancer? And these take, take you links to these, those different mouse models. We also have the news and events page. The mouse models of the immune cancer database objective is to provide web-based access to primary research data on the pathobiology of cancer and genetically defined strains of laboratory mice and patient-derived xenograph models. MMHC was first made available to the public in the fall of 1998. For many years, MMHC was known as the Mouse Tumor Biology Database, or MTB. We, uh, there was a name change a few years ago to be more appropriate for the type of information we were collecting as we were importing the patient-derived xenograph models and getting more into human homology. There are many different types of data in the Mouse Models Human Cancer Database and it's collected by in a multiple of types of ways. We collect most of our information from peer-reviewed scientific literature. The, we also get information from different TGL pathologists who submit us information from the different source uh, historical databases. We get submission of pathology data from the scientific community. And we also get data from the JAX PDX resource and other different PDX resources as well but most of them are from the JAX PDX resource. All the data in MMHCDB is curated by trained biologists. The data, and by that I mean nothing goes in directly. Everything is, has a pair of eyes look at it to make sure that it conforms to consistent nomenclature, both for alleles and strains. It conforms to, the, there are different uh, anatomical structural uh, databases or lists and so that we can have consistency between different uh, terms. As listed before, that all this data is, ma is make sure that it adheres to gene sim the official standard nomenclature for gene symbols and names, allele symbols and names, strain names, and the anatomical structures. What type of data does MMHC take? Well, we basically take curate data on spontaneous and induced tumors rising in the laboratory mouse. By that, I mean, if the tumor shows up in the mouse, it doesn't matter how it's induced, whether you put a chemical treatment, whether you have a virus, whether you, it can occur spontaneously, whether it's a transgenic that generates a tumor or it's a conditional where you use a creed to activate a gene and which causes a mouse. If it arises in the mouse, we will collect information on it. If it does not arise in the mouse, if it's transplanted, if it's a cell line, if it's a tumor from another mouse that's put in there, we don't collect information on that database, on that type of data. We have recently, when the four or five years ago, started collecting information on patient-derived xenografts, which are a very, very specific type of xenograph where they take a sample from the initial tumor and transplant that into an immunodeficient mouse. And this or humanized mouse. And this this tumor grows in the similar theoretically in a similar fashion as it would in the actual human. So it's used as a good model for examining molecular models of that particular tumor or by preclinical models. We do not curate data on tumor cell lines, as we said before, transplanted tumors, or human tumor xenographs, by that we're defining those that have been Tra uh, transform in some manner cell lines or treated, and if they ha are put into a non-immunodeficient mouse. We collect large numbers of different types of data. The different types that we basically will take anything that we can pull out and categorize out of the, the submission or the reference. We collect information on the strains, what type of strain is the uh, tumor is in, the strain name, the strain type, the genotype of that particular strain, detailed information on the tumor itself. What is this classification? Is it an adenoma? Is it an adenocarcinoma? Etc. What is the organ of origin or what is affected? Um, does, if, does it start in the lung and then metastasize to the liver or etc. The We also have the tumor frequency, which if it's available, will include the tumor colony size and the number of mice affected 
and when this data was taken, when that they uh, uh, analyzed that particular mouse, a uh, set of mice. What is the reproductive status of the mouse? Has it been mated? Is it virgin? Is it, has it given birth, et cetera? Was the mouse treated in any way by, by an agent, a chemical agent or a biological agent? Are there any somatic mutations in this particular tumor that show up? These could be either ones that spontaneously occur or occur because of a genetic change because it's treated with the Cree or flip. Are there any QTLs involved in the particular tumor? Are there any pathology data attached to this particular tumor? And this can include both images and any specific annotations. And are there any gene expression data sets linked to this tumor, such as from GEO, the gene expression omnibus, or Ray Express? An important point is that each piece of information in the database is supported by a citation. Nothing is freestanding in the database. Everything is hung off of a reference. The reference that was from the publication, or if the information is submitted directly by a researcher, we will generate a reference and making sure that that researcher is detailed as the source of this information and giving credit for the submission to the database. How much data is in the mouse models human cancer database? As of last week, there were 109,077 tumor frequency records. There were 8,250 tumor strains, strains that contain tumors. There were 7,182 pathology records and 6,606 pathology images. There was information on 18,719 references. Now, this could be information for references that we have completely coded in terms of you put detailed information on all the tumors involved in that particular reference, or it could be in our index, which lists a very high level information status of that particular reference, just based on what types of information it has, have information on what types of tumors, but not the details specifically. In the PDX models, we have 428 PDX models that we have information on the database. This changes constantly as new models are put in and some of the models are retired. And for those models, we have 2,728 pathology images associated with those particular models. Many of them are different stains to characterize exactly what type of tumor that model is in that model. As I've said before, the mouse models of human cancer include images as part of our pathology data. Many of these images include annotations from the source reference directly from the submitter. Six, we have, these are 6,606 images and 2,089 pathology reports and 2,599 tumor frequencies that they are attached to. Up to now, 45 pathologists have submitted images. Many of these images use the Zoomify program or our whole slide scans. And these are two different ways of taking an image and being able to change the magnification of that image to get a much higher, closer in view of the particular one. Zoomify is you can is, is fairly well, pulse light scans are much larger and get a much, much more higher magnification. Where do we get our images from? Our images come from online submissions from us pathologists. We have a large number of direct submissions from people who are either, either at the Jackson Laboratory or associated with the Jackson Laboratory, Igor McCallion, Gerald Ward, and John Sunberg. They submitted data to the database, and these images were entered by the different curators. John Sunberg has submitted images from the Shock Ellison Aging Study and additional studies he has been, uh, he has come, uh, been participating in. And he annotates these, and the editors, curators, enter them. We also download images directly from journal websites such as PNAS or Cancer Research that the MMHC has permission to publish and path, and we also download from Pathbase. Pathbase is a very good uh, pathology database run by Paul Schofield. It's well worth it. I believe, I'm pretty sure Paul will be speaking at some point over this uh, talk, but it's a very good database. For the images, we make sure if we have, for every image that we put into the database, there is always a copyright reference stated for it so that you know who has the rights to that database and where we are to so that image and where we got them from. As we said before, many of the images use the Zoomify program or our whole slide scans. Zoom, 
Zoomify and whole slide scans enable the representation of fast and interactive high quality images on the web using HTML, JPEGs, and Flash. Here's an example of the Zoomify image in the database. This is an image that was actually given to us by Igor Michaelian, but the image is originally from Gerald Ward. This is for a mammary gland pa papillary carcinoma, adenocarcinoma. And you can see we have this is a pathology image detail, which gives you links all the information we have on that particular image, including any annotations from the pathologist, the description, who we got it from, what is the background in terms of what type of tumor, was there any treatment, any synonyms, what's the strain background, was, uh, what type of mouse it is, any synonyms, etc. Now, if what Zoom find able to do is to increase the magnification, such as you see this area in here, we've increased the magnification up to a certain level. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very good, but it's limited by the size of the image. Now, we also have whole slide scans, which are much, much larger. The you can see here is an example of a screen, of an image detail page for whole slide scan. And you see this is the scan itself. You can, by clicking on that, link, you can go to the interactive scan and increase the magnification. This, as, as in the previous link, gives all the information directly associated with this image. It's a lung adenoma from 636 days. It was submitted, submitted by John Sundberg. It's from an SMJ male exhibiting the adenoma. And it carries all the information we have on this uh, image. If you click on this link, it will take you to an interactive page where you can change the magnification for this particular image up back and forth. And you can see back in the lower right corner, right there, you can see that's the whole image and we have magnified it so we're only seeing that one small portion there. And it maintains a, a very high quality uh, view. Very, uh, these were from John Sundberg and were very, very nice. One thing you have to worry about is because these are very large, if your connection is very weak, then it can take a long time to load them. But if you have a good question, it a good connection, it works very well. We also maintain links to other resources, such as the mouse phenome database, Festing's list of inbred strains, biology of the mouse mammary gland website, PathBase, as previously mentioned, the Cancer Genome Atlas, and PDX Finder. And if we have the numbers specifically for the strains, we will link to the mouse repository or the Jack's Mouse website or the NCA repository where that strain came from. We have additional data pages that are also linked besides just searching for specific uh, mouse tumor data. We have an immunohistochemistry chemistry page, which has a list of over 500 different uh, antibodies that have been tested in laboratory mice. We have a lymphoma pathology page that was, contains a, a list of lymphoma leukemia uh, data donated by Jerry Ward. I'll cover both those in more detail later. We have what's called the dynamic tumor frequency grid, which allows you to search and to look in a generalized tabular manner at, lar at, the at the inbred mouse frequencies of different tumors and different strains. And PDX Like Me, which allows you to search for, to, de to define the parameters of the PDX model that you would like. And it'll come back with everything matching your PDX model. I'll go into all of this in more detail later. In order to, I'll, I'll give a little bit of a few of the examples for the, how do you use the mouse model human cancer database. This is the homepage, which I, we already know we got, you can get to from the uh, laboratory webpage, the MGI, and through the MGI homepage. In order, most of the data in our database is, comes from the advanced search page, which you get to from this link here. This is the advanced search page. As you can see in the advanced search page, contains a lot of different, advanced search page allows you to choose your search parameters that from the faceted menus on the left. See on, on the, in the center, it shows you what type of info, uh, the a upper level view of the results. So this, but this is listing literally all of them, 5,000, 59,580. If you wanted to limit this, to any, only to those my, uh, tumors that have 
pathology data, you would click on has pathology image in the facet on the left, and now it's changed the limitations. So now there's only 1,805 different tumors. Now there's more than that because each of these different model names is listed by the model, not by the actual tumor. And each of these models can have multiple different tumors, such as this, this particular model has seven references attached to it, and each of those references will have a certain number of tumors, eight, and it has 18 pathology images. Now, if you want to limit it even more, say you're interested in lymphoma leukemias, you could put in leukocytes as the primary site. Sorry. And you can see that that, li that limits the, uh, unfortunately, I've had a problem with the video up there. It, that limits it to the specific ones that are only, only leuc leukocyte leukemias. You can also, you, and what happens is if you click on this arrow here, that takes you to the model details for each of these specific ones. And you can see the frequency range for any of the different tumor models. That's the highest point for the range here. By clicking on one of the different links, you can see any details involved in a specific type of model. Like this model, model here is a strain from uh, B6.129 containing mutations in RNF8 and the TRP53. And give the age, the frequency, the sex, if it's known, give you links to images. These are different particular images. This is the primary, this is a metastasis. These will take you to a specific detail pages. And you can do that for any of these particular tumor models. And if you wanted to, you can add additional, you can list change the tumor types. If you see the number listed there are the tumor types that of this particular set that you're searched. Of the 159 you're searching for, 117 of them are lymphomas, 15 of them are histiocytic sarcomas, hyperplasia. And you can go back and forth. You can unclick this has pathology images to get all the leukocytes. Or you can unclick this leukocyte and it'll go backwards to all of the different types of models. We have a large number, we have other different types of tumor search pages. And such as one example of that is the tumor frequency grid. You would access these by going using the pull down menus at the top, like the pull down menu for searches tools, lists of tumor frequency grid, the patient derived zoomograph, xenograph, PDX like me, or the PDX finder. So if you wanted to look at the tumor frequency grid, see an example here, if you click on that and you go to this particular page in the upper left, the tumor frequency grid is a summary of spontaneous tumors in inbred mice. The strain families are grouped by strain genealogy. So if you look over here, you see these are the 129s, the LPs, CBAs, etc., DBAJs. And what you can do in the strain families and organs are expandable to show frequency results for substrains and structures. The struct different structures are across the top. If you click on one of those, this will expand out to all of its substructures. The colored cells represent a visual representation of the highest level of frequency at that particular combination, such as here, the memory, the CBA memory gland right there, has a high level of, of uh, currents. If you click on any of those cells, you will get a query for that particular example. For, for example, if you clicked on that cell, you would query for CBA in the memory gland. That have CBA strains that have tumors in the memory glands. What you, each, what you can do, you can be customized. For example, if you click there, select CBA, then click generate grid, you'll get a new grid that only covers CBA and the CBA substrains, right? That you see here. Some of the other pages of interest to the pathologists in general, one would be the immunohist chemistry page and also the lymphoma pathology report page. These are accessed through the other resources tab at the top of the MGI and MHCDB homepage. So if you look at the antibody staining report, the immunohist chemistry page 
as we listed here, it has over 500 antibodies listed, and it contains a list of antibodies tested by researchers in mice and data on each antibody, including basic details of the antibody, conditions used in the test, and results of the testing. Negative results are included as well as links to images when available. If the antibody or if the name is underlined, there's a link to an image on that particular antibody. So you can see there's the antigen species, antibody type, what type, uh, type is the, for the uh, was it raised in, or what type is, it was raised in, where it came from, product number link. Further off to the right, I couldn't fit it on the screen, are the conditions, the results of if you do it under this condition, is it a good or a bad result, etc. We've gotten these mostly from John Sundberg, Leslie Bechtel, and multiple other individuals who have submitted. We also, in addition to, we have a set of antibody condition survey slides that John Sundberg has submitted that test an antibody in different fixation methods and treatments with annotations from John. As you can see here, this is a panel of pancreas tissue stained for glucagon with four fixation methods and three treatment methods and untreated. And if you look, this is very important because if you're trying to do pancreas and you're trying to find glucagon, if you don't use the right treatment method, you're going to get nothing. You, you have no idea how accurate you are, the information you're going to get is. And for this particular one, the only one of the four treatments and the four, met and the four methods, fixation methods, that showed significant staining was NBF with E15 and possibly E115 treated with Borns. But that's very important that if you were using one of the other methods, you don't know if there's no expression or you just didn't use the proper technique. Now, the lymphoma pathology page, like I said, is uh, Jerry Ward has made available to us a set of lymphoma le leukemia whole slide scans with annotations from a 2001 NA study set. This page contains details about markers used to characterize lymphoma leukemias in mouse models and are identified by case numbers. And as you can see, the data includes the case number, what strain this uh, particular lymphoma was, leukemia lymphoma is in, what is the tissue and the diagnosis, what type of stain was used for that particular slide, what the type of slide is, what fixation, was antigen retrieval used, etc. If you click on any of these connections, you will go to the image detail page for that particular slide. This, and then you'll, of course, as I said before, we are, all our images have caption and we also have a copyright that designate who has the rights to that particular image. Like this one was, in, was uh, in, submitted by Jerry Ward. It's from a study from Herb Morris, Torgny Fredrickson, and Jerry Ward. And he gives notes on any uh, particular details on this particular stain for this particular type of tumor. We have the information on the antibodies, the, any reference. This reference actually is Jerry. <laughs> it's a direct submission by Jerry. So we generated a reference for Jerry for the submission. And this contains all the information that we have on that. Now, because it's a whole scan, if you link, click to this link right there, that will take you to the whole slide, whole slide scan page. Now, the whole slide scan page, which is right here, this is the upper level. You can zoom in to a great degree. If you look in the lower right corner, you see we have zoomed in to just that particular level, and you can see the higher magnification for that particular one. Now, now we'll go to the patient-derived xenograph page. That, as we showed you before, we used you uh, access from the pull-down menu. The patient-derived the patient-derived xenograph Patient-derived xenografts are generated through the graph and passaging of tissues or cells from a patient's tumor into an immunodeficient or humanized mouse host. They're a very, they're important and growing platform for cancer biology research, particularly preclinical testing. Now, there are all sorts of different parameters you can search to try to identify a particular mouse model or PDX model that you're interested in. You can search for the primary site. Was there any specific details? Is it a triple negative cancer, etc.? Uh, you can you search by the diagnosis? Is it adenocarcinoma, adenoma, carcinoma, whatever? Was is it treated by something? Are there effusion genes involved? Are there gene expression data, the gene variants, copy number variant data? In particular, it's a nice simple search. Just search for my breast models. And you get the return here. There are 44 matching PDX models. And you see the information includes the primary site, 
the diagnosis, initial and final. What's the tumor site? Is it uh, the tumor type, primary malignant, the, the age of the individual, the sex, and the uh, what type of other additional information attached? If you click on the colored link there, you go to the model detail page. And you can see it contains more detailed information than was on the summary page and includes stages, final diagnosis, primary type, etc. It also includes any additional data, such as gene expression data, copy number of variants, tumor mutation beta, or microsatellite data, etc., and any links to images. These are all, and ends up being H&E images, but there are a lot of stained images as well for this particular tumor. So for this particular tumor. In addition to that, we have the patient with the PDX like me. Now, PDX like me is a different an enhancement on the PDX search page where you can put in specific molecular parameters to identify individual PDX models that you're interested in. In addition, you can change how the output is done. Whether they include models with clinically relevant variants for supply genes, if searching for C by CNV, for display log ratios, et cetera, or if you're searching by expression level. And that'll determine what type of return you get in your results page. Now here is, a, is one, is that particular search there. As you can see, there are a significant number of models that goes well down the, the page. And you see these give, give the report based on the details of how you decided you wanted your results. What's the uh, KRAS amplification level? Are there clinically relevant variants? What's your log ratio? Is there, what's the expression level of kit, et cetera? This is very important in terms of if you are an individual who's looking for, have a specific tumor that you're looking for. Now, the mouse models of human cancer database staff is, consists of Carol Bolt, who is the PI, Myself, Dale Bagley, Debbie Kropke, who are the two curators involved, Steve Newshouse's software person, and John Sunberg, who is our staff pathologist. Now, before I take off, I am going to do a little bit of a tour, live tour of the database. That's a little dangerous, but you never know. So, as you said, in order to get the mouse models of human cancer database, you click on there and you end up at the mouse models of human cancer database. As, you, as, as we described before, to get to the advanced search page, you go to the advanced search page and it generates an advanced search. Some in entertaining things you can do here, as you can see, we have a large number of different parameters you can add to your search requests. You, an interesting thing about this is these are movable. For example, you, you will like strain, you can move, change how you organize the search facets on the left. Now we had before we said we want pathology images that gave you 1805 tumor models with pathology images and say we wanted adenocarcinomas. Yeah, 244 with pathology images. Or say you don't want adenocarcinomas, you can get back out. Say you want adenoma with pathology images and say you wanted an inbred strain. You can type type of strain you want, say you want C3H, GJ, there. And this is from Sunberg to John. And like I said, get the different de uh, model details involved. And you get the summary page. And the summary page has all the different information available to you on that particular strain. So it's highly, it's highly variable in terms of, uh, very powerful in terms of how you, what different types of surgeries you can do. Now, as I said before, different search tools, we have the tumor frequency grid, patient or xenograph, PDX like me, PDX finder, 
or the lymphoma page or the antibody staining page. Now I'm looking for basically the lymphoma page you can either download as a Microsoft so Microsoft Excel format or in an HTML format. And this is the page you have before, and this is the pathology image detail app what we looked at before. I want to show you an actual representation of the full scan slide. You can see here just by using your mouse scroller, you can I've got a reasonably strong connection, but I'm at home, so my connection is over cable. So you can do that with this is about as far as you can get. As you tell, the closer you get, the less uh, clear it gets, but it's extremely efficient. It's, it's very, they're very, very good pictures. Oops. And before I go off, I want to show you, this is the tumor frequency grid that I showed before. And I showed you that you could expand the different structures. Do that by clicking some the, a, a box and generating grid. All this does is all I wanted to do was everything with the adrenal gland. So you can you, you can generate very very specific grids. Or you can click on the arrow and expand it right there. You can see expand it in there. You can also as I said before, you can generate a specific, strain specific search by say going to CBA and say generate grid. So it shows all the different CBA substrains and all the information. In, in a vis very visual manner that we have on the index strains. Now, that's pretty much all I have to say for today. And I wanna thank you all for being here today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'm more than happy to do uh, any private tutoring or private session for anyone who wants to ask me questions about the database.